Oh, hi! My name's Lily Hope. You've just joined me at my loom. I'm a Chilkat weaver living and working in Juneau, Alaska, and I'm weaving a little tiny Chilkat blanket. Have you ever seen one of these before? Have you ever seen anybody weave like this before? It's kind of wild, huh? What I'm doing is my hands are twining across this whole weaving just as if it was a basket. You've seen somebody weave a basket before, right? Or maybe you have a basket somewhere in your house. This is a flat basket. We don't make these blankets to go on beds though. We don't lay them over our beds like our favorite cozy, cozy blankie. These ones are actually danced and used in ceremony. On a chill cap blanket, we have our warps that hang all the way the whole length of the blanket. And we have our weaver strands, which we also call weft. Weft rhymes with the word left because our weft goes weft and white. Not weft and white, left and right on our blanket, silly. Go weft and white, right? Usually our stitches on a chill cap blanket will go over two and behind two, but you can see my stitches are going over three and behind three. So this is pretty unique in chill cat weaving. Usually we use this kind of three, over three and behind three technique for the borders, but I'm weaving a whole big area of just the sky blue color, so I'm weaving over three and behind three at a time. A lot of the work that we do is kind of creative problem solving. Like we come up with a problem like, oh, there's a hole right there. I better put another piece of warp in there because it's too much of a gap. And if it doesn't work, I can take it back and fix it. Yeah, so a lot of the work that I do is kind of testing it out to see if it works, almost like a scientist. That hole that I need to fill in my weaving where it needs an extra piece of warp, I have to cut off a length of that. So I need that to be added into my piece. And to be able to add it, I need to use one of my little pins. So I'm gonna get my little pin and pierce it through here. And then I'm gonna put it up the back in my weaving and start weaving right over this new one. If I keep weaving, I'm gonna kinda of squish it over, but there's gonna be a full on hole here. So I wanna fix it and put this little guy in there, but I can't just pin it right in the center. So I'm gonna flip this over on the back side. You can see the back of my weaving. And I'm gonna pin him right under here and make him go down the back. Let's see. So then I can weave right over him. Shoop. He's pinned in and flip him this way and then he should be set and ready to be captured right here on my weaving, right in there, right in the hole where I need him. So then I can weave right along. Doo, 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 doo. So you can do that too, you know, when you're thinking about something and like maybe it's going to work and maybe it isn't and trying it out, it's not that scary because you could go back and just try it again. And that's so much, we can apply that to like anything, right? Um, maybe I'll try these brownies with um, butter in it instead of oil or um, no eggs. And then maybe it doesn't turn out exactly like you like it. You can try it again, it's kind of fun. The trying it out and seeing if it works and then trying it out again and not being scared if it's not exactly what you want, that's kind of a good thing to try out for like lots of things in your life. Hey, guess what time it is? It's activity time! Today we're going to practice weaving out of things you can find around your house. Let's get started. First, we're going to need some materials. Grab some scissors, get two different colored sheets of paper, a pencil, a ruler, and make sure to have a little patience and focus. We're going to start by drawing vertical lines all the way from the top of one of our sheets of paper to the bottom. Anywhere from 10 to 15 lines would be good. Now we're going to take our scissors and cut along the lines that we just drew. Remember, be careful. Nice job, you're doing great. Now we're going to take our other sheet of paper and draw a horizontal line about an inch or two from the top of the sheet. Now we will draw vertical lines starting from our horizontal line all the way down to the bottom of the sheet of paper. Now we're
we're going to cut along our vertical lines and stop at the horizontal line we drew. Don't worry if you get off the lines a bit, it'll just add character to your project. This sheet of paper, with the strips hanging down, is going to be our warp strands. The thin individual pieces are going to be our weaver strands, also known as whip. Now it's time to start weaving. We are going to start running our weaver strands from the left side and go under two and over two and repeat until you get all the way to the opposite side of your warp. On the next row below, we are going to run our weaver strands over two and under two, opposite of what we did last time. You're doing great! As you work your way down the warp, you will begin to see your weaving take shape. Now, using your imagination, dream up some other fun paper weaves using your creativity. Use different types of paper, maybe go over two and under three, or make something wild like alternating between thick and thin weaver strands. The sky's the limit. What are chill cat blankets made out of? The materials we use in a chill cat blanket are kind of wild. The first thing we need is cedar bark that's been boiled in the crock pot for three days so there's no sticky sap left. The next thing we need is mountain goat. Oh, this still has so many messy pieces and long guard hairs in there. We've still got a lot of work to do on that. So, ta-da! There it is. We've got the mountain goat. Most of all those long hairs are out. We've got most of the little burr things out and it's ready to be spun. It's so soft. And we've got our bowl of water. It's warm water and a little sponge and this will come into play later. All right, let's get started. Here we go. I am preparing to spin my bark, so I'm lowering it down and submerging it. Ooh, I'm submerging it in this bowl, getting it all wet and soft and ready in the warm water so it'll spin easily with my mountain goat. This little guy that I'm gonna put on my leg is a little canvas spinning pad, kind of made of the same material as your denim jeans, any jeans that you might own, but of course this doesn't have any indigo color in it, so our, our warp won't change to a blue color. So I'm gonna tie that around my waist, and this will keep my leg from getting too wet while I'm spinning. So, then I take my other ties, wrap it under my leg and around the front, and tie a little bow. We have our little strands of mountain goat roving that we've pulled most of the little guard hairs out of. And we're gonna go along and make sure that it's about the same thickness all the way along. Testing it out like this, let's see. Oh, it's feeling pretty good and even. We don't want it to be more fluffy in some parts and less fluffy in others because we wanna make a really even warp for us to weave on. Okay, I'm gonna lay this into my other pieces that I already started, and I'm gonna put a little bit of water, oh, I'm dipping into the bucket, and putting a little bit of water on, and then I'm gonna spin it just a little bit to start it. And I have to do the same thing on the other side, because I have to have two strands of mountain goat and two strands of bark. So I'm spinning just a little bit to start it out. That's really just helping this strand hold on to the other one that I was already working on. You can see there's a tiny little piece of bark in there from when I was working on this before. So it's getting a little bit short. I'm gonna have to add some um, more bark in just a minute. But right now, I need to put some water on my spinning pad. We're gonna spin it down the leg, and then it's spinning, 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 and let go! Isn't that fun? And we do it again. Let go! There's not very much that's being spun each time my hand goes down my leg but it sure is pretty. I'm gonna take my cedar bark and lay it right down into where I want it to go. And I have to spin it just a little bit with the, with the goat around the bark, just a little bit to start it. And you can see I'm leaving a little tail too. See that part? I'm gonna leave that tail. And then I just go and spin. 
I want to leave the little tail there because it helps to keep all of this bark strong through here. And then at the very, very end, I'm going to trim all these little tufties off of there and it'll make it a nice, smooth piece to weave on. I spun so much warp before I even started weaving. I spun thousands of yards, hundreds and hundreds of hours of spinning before I started weaving. Oh, mountain goat really loves to be spun though. It's just grabbing onto the cedar bark, it's so fun. It says, oh, is this what my job is now? I'm all done insulating the goat and keeping the goat warm in the winter. Now I get to be a chill cat blanket. I like to imagine that the goat is happy. What is form line? Form line is the art that is practiced along the Northwest Coast by the Clinket, Haida, and Tsimshian peoples. You might see form line design on totem poles, or on house screens, or painted bentwood boxes, and sometimes even on dance paddles or canoes. Gosh, you can even see form line on t-shirts now, and purses and leggings. There's a lot of places you can find form line. Some of my favorite parts of form line are the ovoids. Do you guys know what ovoids are? Ovoid is the foundational shape in formline art. Kind of looks like a water balloon that's sitting on a table. Smooch! Flat on the bottom and kind of domed at the top. All the little lines in formline design are really complicated in themselves. And you saw how hard chill cat weaving is. So what we really need to do is figure out what parts of it could be taken out or modified and then simplified so that we can weave those shapes. Because every time we're weaving along and we hit a little fine line, that means there's a color change. And color changes are really hard to do in Chilcat weaving. To get the yellow in our Chilcat blankets, we have to trade for this beautiful lichen that's called wolf moss. And the wolf moss is really more like bright, bright chartreuse greenish color. But when we cook it down into a pot and then put our yarns into it, it makes a really beautiful sunshiny yellow. And that's the yellow that we've used for hundreds of years in Chilcat blankets. Well, to make the blue, and this blue is actually an acid dye, so we didn't, we didn't get to make this the way that we made it 200 years ago. But to make a blue, we could take ammonia, which is totally not safe for kids. It is a very toxic, toxic liquid. But we take that ammonia and we put copper pipe down into the liquid and let it sit for lots of months, like from your fourth birthday all the way to your fifth birthday, like a long time. And the liquid, that ammonia turns like a bright blue color. And then we pour that bright blue liquid over the whole skein of yarn that we want to dye. And it turns kind of grayish. It's not that pretty. But then we take apple cider vinegar and lay it down into the apple cider vinegar. <gasps> and it makes like a beautiful seafoam green color. And then to make our black, the black that we use here, this one has been acid dyed. And this is also acid dyed. But if we want to make an old, old timey blackish color, it actually comes out more almost like this color, like a, a reddish brown cedar bark color, but we don't use cedar bark to get that color. We go to the base of a hemlock tree. Have you ever seen a hemlock tree? Well, we go down to the base of that tree and get all the bark near the bottom and even kind of hatch it into the base and get some of the inner hemlock bark. We put it into our pot and then we start to cook it and cook it and cook it and we throw our yarn skeins in there, all of our weft yarns that we want to change the color of and we leave it there overnight. And then when you pull out your skein, it's like, oh, it's a beautiful dark brown, reddish brown color. And then you get to weave with it to make your black borders. That's what we do for Chilcat Blankets. This is your assignment. When you go on your next adventure with your family, or maybe just to the grocery store, I want you to keep your eyes peeled for some form line, okay? Look for an ovoid, or maybe even a little face like this. It might be painted in black and red. It might be turquoise. But look for some form line next time you go out. Or even look for adapted form line so we can weave Chilcat Blankets out of them.